Hey everybody, this is Rido, and in celebration of the Chinese New Year, we are going to cover a Chinese game, Mahjong. Now, I just covered Mahjong Solitaire, which isn't really Mahjong. It's tile matching and it's played by one person. And it was made by the same girl, same company, and it was called Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire, and it wasn't very good program. It didn't really give us what we wanted and I'm hoping for a lot more but when we come over here and look at like the settings and the way I have to drag all the resolutions here and the way all of the text is backwards and forwards I even in the Japanese version it's uh, not actually lining up or showing and it was like this before I even changed the resolution to 1080p which wasn't the default thing we are gonna get different girls probably more girls they there are achievements inside the game but not achievements in Steam itself so take that for what it's worth and it's kind of important to start this series by trying to explain how to play Mahjong so there's I'm gonna just kind of run through this Mahjong is like gin rummy if you don't know how to play gin rummy uh, or if you don't play gin rummy the proper way and you just play gin which is uh, the simpler version what you're going to do is you're gonna try to make matches of three or runs of three so you three fours is a match of three and one two three is a run of three or you can make a four of a match of four or a run of four and when you've taken all of the tiles that you're playing with which I believe is about 12 when you've got all of those combined plus two tiles that match each other you win now because this is Chinese words they there are some phrases there's a pong a chow a kong and a wrong so what is pong pong is a match of three if I remember correctly a chow is a run of three or a run of four and a kong is a match of four and Ron is when you win uh, so we'll get into more of that later and they're not really explaining that there's a meld skip switch which melding uh, is part of the scoring and there's a lot of scoring that goes on here this is actually Mahjong is actually an incredibly complicated game to play so it's kind of strange that they have this uh, Mahjong Solitaire that's really simplest, simple and then we have something that's really easy. What's funny here is we have some credits for companies that they used uh, free of charge other people's software but there's no real credits as far as the creators of this game uh, at all. So for the other help we have rules uh, and we seem to have some regulated rules here that probably we'll just learn as we play and it seems like this is also translated from Japanese poorly so uh, doesn't seem like you're gonna get too much out of this at all so don't listen to the rules listen to me and I'll teach you how to play Mahjong let's play so we could probably change the rule sets uh, you four rounds eight rounds different bonuses and things like that let's just leave everything the same though start a new game and play and I guess we get to pick what character we want to play as and we can randomize and it seems like as we 
play more, we'll unlock more characters. I would win five times uh, of first, and let's see. Uh, then a hundred times of first gives you the Mahjong Goddess. We're not going to make it to that. Uh, and then here, work with more than 20 kind of a hand. Uh, that's never gonna happen, so let's start here. This girl, by the way, is one of the characters from Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire. Uh, this girl also was in it. Um, so, they have different stats written in Japanese, but since I don't know what those stats mean, we I'm just probably best playing with a overall equal character as a partner. Although, no, you, you don't play partners usually. I think what we're going to end up doing is just playing against different girls. Yep. So it's, it's a four... It's a all for all. Four players. So what happened there is we each drew a wind. And the wind tile is one of these. So I have the south wind here, and the west wind, and here's another south wind. And whoever got, I would assume the north wind goes first. And so, no, actually, whoever got the south wind went first because it, we got the west wind, it says it so right here. Uh, and that may very well be the way you play. Um, so, Gin Rummy, a, you would draw a card and discard a card. Or you would draw a card from the pile. It's the exact same concept. Here's the pile. Here is my hand. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 tiles. So it's a little bit more than what I thought. This is going to do us nice and simple because instead of having to learn the Japanese characters for this tile set, because there's four class of characters uh, of tiles, this is the Japanese character tile set. They've put the Roman numbers right here. That's what English numbers are, uh, well, they're not Roman numerals, but uh, the English numbers are right here. So you don't have to remember that this symbol means nine, or this symbol means eight, or this symbol means six, which is always where I had trouble. It's not difficult to figure out with the dots. It's not difficult to figure out with the bamboos. And it's not difficult to figure out uh, numbers with any of the other sets because there are no numbers with the other sets. Those are special wild pieces. So I haven't made a play. There's a button here. This game looks shockingly like the self, a cell phone game I was playing actually. Uh, what you can do is you can throw a stick in the middle and and say I'm done playing. I, I would like a thousand extra points if I don't draw any more and just put your tiles face down and see if your hand beats the other hand. Whichever hand wins gets the scoring points, which this game is going to help us a lot with. We could pause the game right now. This, I believe, would be the throwing the stick at the very beginning, which is, uh, I think they call it the bone. Uh, but first move is simple. We want to draw from the pile, which I think I've already done, and this is my draw. So then I need to decide what I want to get rid of. Um, now, unlike Jin Rummy, I don't think having larger uh, numbers hurts your score. So keeping the three and tossing the seven is actually is not really very useful. Now you can see that the gameplay went very fast there uh, these games can be pretty slow in the real world and they're designed 
for people to sit around and talk and have fun, so uh, they've sped it up here. I imagine that there is something on some of the settings that would slow that down. So I could, for instance, take this, but ooh, view mode, interesting, but I can't look at the girls or anything. I could pick up, I think, this if I wanted it. This is the red dragon symbol, uh, one of the wild cards, but getting rid of that. So here's our first opportunity for an automatic meld. We have Ichi here, or Ich, if it's pronounced, pr pronounced properly. Uh, it's spelled I-C-H-I, which is one in Japanese. We can either Pung pick up this and match it with these three and put it down as part of a score that everybody knows I have, or we can uh, pass and draw an extra piece. And it's probably strategically best to just Pung right now. So we do this, and the way they put it down there, one of them was sideways because I picked it up from here, and that one goes in the middle, just as a tradition. Now, part of punging, conging, or chowing is you still have to get rid of something. So there goes our, there goes something we may have needed but probably not. Now if I could get a 5 here I could get a straight rush but right now let's get rid of that. Now Kong is when you have 4 uh, through draws and you can put them face down on this 4 and hopefully we'll get lucky enough for that. This 2, this 3, and this 4 makes a chow so we'll keep that. So she just put down uh, three face down, so uh, that that is, I don't think actually a Kong, I think that's just a, you drew three from your own hand and so you don't have to show it. We have the similar situation here, but so here's where we go Kong. I could do Pung and use only three of these and keep one nine, which might be helpful if I had a seven and an eight so I could go six, seven, eight, nine. But since I don't, Kong for more points. And yes, they're all speaking in uh, Japanese, so we have no idea what they're saying, but it's probably intense Mahjong battle strategy. You may also have noticed that one of these tiles here got turned over. That's part of the scoring system, uh, which is going to probably affect how many points I get in a good way. But it might also affect when the game ends, but I doubt it. I don't think so. There's a lot of rules that I'm not 100% on. So all I need to draw is either a 2 or a 5, and I will have a run and win. There are 38 pieces remaining. And it's a little weird how you do the discard piles here, because you have this permanent history that you can look on in each player. So there's a lot less memorization than what a professional level of playing Jin Rami is. But the rules are almost exactly the same. It really is almost the same thing. So here's a basic strategy in Jin Rami or Mahjong. I could take this two, match this two, and hope for another two or a five. Or I can stay with the three and four that needs either a two or a five of the other set. And it's better to stay with what you've got unless you see people have dropped the two or five here somewhere and if we look at the history we can see there really hasn't been a drop of almost any of these tiles so now you have a slightly different problem because you have 
two, three, four, five, uh, and you could change it and get rid of the two and keep the five. It doesn't really change anything in this case, but it would change something if you win a run with having no aces, no ones at all, or all aces. Uh, usually if there's a score like that, there's the ace, uh, it, there's points for having all aces uh, or, or all uh, pongs or all chows or none of one suit or all of one suit. In fact, one of the best scores you could get on this is if you just had all of one suit in a row. Uh, but that's highly unlikely to happen. So here we have a chow, but we want to pass on this this move because there's no reason to pick up this five. We'd much rather draw. We're drawing for a run, a victory, right now. But we're about to end the game. There's only two more uh, tiles. Here's the one of the suit. Uh, no, I believe this actually is the one of the bamboo. Hmm. So it's a drawn game. And this isn't, it's pretty much how it ends always, but my score was higher than everybody else's, so I ended up with 3,000 points. So next round East 2. So. Uh, the wins here, east-west, are only good to match to each other. You can't get north, east, west, and south, and that means something. Uh, yes, this is the one of the bamboo. So getting rid of them early makes sense, and that is why you see blanks and dragons and all these wild cards typically eliminated kind of quickly. Uh, here we have a five that's in red. This is just to help uh, see the difference, but it also can be used for extra score, and I guess they've got some extra scoring going on, so we'll see about that, because here we have a five for the other group, and that's good, and then we have five for the other group. Now, you can't take a 5 and a 5 and a 5 and merge those together and make something out of it, so that's it. Also, that 5 is not in red, if that means anything, and I think it does. So I can go 6, 7, 8. So chow, and I can either choose this 6, 7, 8, or I can go 5, 6, 7. And I guess I'll pick five, six, seven. Yeah. So I believe she just said that her heart is beating because she's so excited. Uh, but I'm certainly not really well versed in Japanese. I barely understand a few words. So that. <laughs> So she just threw the bone in, so she's ready to, she's ready to win, uh, which does not set well. And here is a non-red 5, hmm. so I'm desperately trying to make matches here, get rid of this, get rid of this, I need And it's gone all the way around. So she she calls a run, run with the bone, and she's got three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, uh, west, west, and then she drew the nine. To make the seven, eight, nine of bamboo, and so this is a winning hand: a run or match of three, a run and match of three, 
They run a match of three. They run a match of three. And two the match. So she called it with the bone. And she got all runs. So no matches. Which gives her s some more points. And so... Because of all of that, she got 3,900 points. And is that a lot? Uh, well, at the end, I ended up in fourth place and she ended up in first place. <laughs> so, that is a lot. Now, we're still on East 3, so there's four rounds. We're still in the game, it's just... It's, we need to recover a little bit. Hmm. The shiny one, the shiny fives, they're shining because they score differently. Let's see. Let's get rid of this. Hmm. So, get rid of this. She's making a lot of melds here. So, Seems like that character is itching the win. Hmm. Go ahead and get rid of this. Get rid of that piece. We have a pump here, which is three. Three blanks. Now, ironically, the blank tiles, it's pretty easy to cheat with those if you were to cheat because you could just turn any of your other tiles upside down and um, and they would be blank. That's why you see there's a green background on all of these tiles, so you can't cheat. Uh, otherwise it would be real easy. And I haven't seen Mahjong tiles with the green background before, so that's something new to me, but I'm almost certainly speaking from a lack of experience there. So here we have five, which will give me a challenge. And so we'll take that. That leaves a five and a five that match. So if I just get rid of that, she's about to win. Uh, but Get rid of the one. And hung that. There. So, we're actually in a very bad position now. Oh. Let's see. I should pass here. And I should get rid of this. And here's a Ron. So I can draw from the op opponent to run. Can't throw in the bone though. This is apparently a score. So you definitely want to run. You want to win if you can win. You're not gonna get a better score, uh, almost certainly. So I had value tiles of one double. So 30p times two doubles uh, somehow gives me 2,900 points. How? I don't know. The scoring aspect really does throw me through a loop. I took those points from her, but that only moves me up to second place. So not only does Rue have to really, really lose in the next round, I have to win. Again, having the having the wins doesn't really help anything, so we'll get rid of that. There's a pen with that. We actually might not be too far from a quick victory here. Let's see. Four, five, six, six, seven. Get rid of this. this because I've already dropped one. Uh, get rid of that. Let's see. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Hmm. Four, 
456. If I found another 456, that'd be nice. I guess I can get rid of this 5. And get rid of that 3. And here we have 8. So I could go 6, 7, 8. And that works nicely. And then get rid of this 4 here. All I need now is a 1 or a 4. And I draw. <laughs> and she throws the bone. So, desperately need to win here. Huh? But she doesn't have to have a full run to, to throw the bone. She's just saying, let's end it after this last round. And whoever has the highest score wins. <laughs> so it goes all the way around to her. Apparently, the, that girl lost. So she got one double for calling, but if we look at her hand, it's actually not a full connection. She has one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, two, three, plus one, plus this, this, and this. Actually, it is a full call. Interesting. Hmm. And, but that only gave her 2,600 points. However, another thousand points for calling leaves her in first place. And now we're to round four of Mahjong. So, let's continue playing down here. Now, the reason why they get rid of the red dragons, I believe, is because there's actually less of them in the deck than anything else. And it's probably also going to affect your score in some way. but I think you get a pretty high score if you could get all four of the red dragons, but it's just less likely. I could be totally wrong about that. There's so much about this game that still I have a lot to learn, and playing a game like this really is a great experience to learn. Now, I have to say, like when I was covering Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire. It's kind of a shame that we're celebrating Chinese New Year by playing a Japanese game, uh, well, a Chinese game. Mahjong is a Chinese game, but this video game was created by a Japanese company. But unfortunately, it's just, that's the way it is. There really aren't that many Chinese games, nor could I find any Mahjong Chinese games on the English Steam store. So I had to pick what I could get and these these titles were on sale last year for Chinese New Year so uh, I have to work with what I have. Uh, there really isn't a major amount of... Uh, <laughs> she loves the call. We can... we've figured this out. Uh, huh? Chow or pass. And let's see. Pong. So I can't call Ron right now, but that's fine. I'm gonna uh I'm going to win here. So what you just saw was a sacred discard. Uh, huh? And every time I do that, it's, I believe, increasing my score. So I just need to toss everything out for ever, pretty much. Until we go to a drawn game. And I get plus 1500. And then you get plus 1500 for calling, but you'll find that. Oh, I thought I would have won that round, but I didn't. So I ended up in second. Oh. So, that's Mahjong Pretty Girls. Uh, Maj Mahjong Pretty Girls Battle. As it is, there's. Let's see. 
several girls here. Ayami, which there was another Amy in the Solitaire game, or Ayami. Seems like there's at least three very young girls that you can play against and you barely see. There's one girl here that we see uh, is a shrine maiden. There's a cat girl shrine maiden. Here's a shrine maiden outfit. Here's another one. Let's see, Airy. Let's see. Yuki. Bit larger proportion girl. Ninja girl here, Miyu. A uh, nun girl. Yuko is another shrine maiden sword fighter, I believe. And then Mahjong Goddess and Mahjong Goddess and Mahjong Devil <laughs> and another Devil and then another Mahjong Goddess and another Mahjong Goddess and another Mahjong Goddess. And then you have Random, which if you just click here, you'll go. I guess immediately to random. And we can go ahead and skip this. But the main game is just this here. And this looks exactly like the cell phone version of the game uh, that I played. And so the interfaces don't seem like they're that much different. You'll get a different girl here. Here we have some rankings that you have to drag in odd ways you drag things upwards to go down which that is weird there's so you can see uh a count grand slam pur pure nine gates 13 orphans the four great the great four winds all of these are special uh scoring things you would try to go for as you're playing mahjong uh, a pure outside hand, a half flush, uh, three quads, full straight, value tiles, I've done that once, all runs, all simples, concealed self draw, call, first turn, turn win. The, here we can see the number of games I've played. Here we can see how many times I've ended up in first, second, and, uh, and third, and fourth. Uh, cutoff games five. Uh, which means I guess draw games. Duck rate is 20%. Your win rounds is uh, one win rate is 20%. I assume duck is probably when you lose because you're the lowest score. Uh, so in comparison to Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire, at the very least this has records. At the very least this has some rule sets that we could change. You could go down to two rounds, uh, a, little, a little bit different. You could try to change some of these uh, these things so that they're all on. Particularly that might very well help you unlock some things. You could lower the score of the initial bones. Which I don't know why you would really want to change any of those right now. What's weird about this though is the option to see the achievements is now missing on this screen. We have start game continue rule set record and but to go we have to click back to get to the main thing to see the achievements which play the, the game 10 times play the game 100 times 10 times of the of the first 10 times a uh, hundred times in first place, win ten times, won a hundred times by Ron, win, win a hundred times by Pick. You would have to play this a lot. Character one, uh, each of the characters you need to play as, as and get three, five, eight times as first place, and then fifteen times as first place. Uh, this is still an incredibly badly translated game, but it helps. Adding the girls to the game, still very stupid. Uh, they clearly say on the website they're never going to get naked. It doesn't seem like in this version they're even going to, uh, they're even going to get different outfits. 
I see no dressing up uh, at all happening here. So that seems like that's as much as you're gonna get. Uh, like when I click on the girl here, there's no way to change their outfit or anything like that. Hmm. They seem to have different play styles and that's what their their ratings are, like here. When you click for the computers, like you can you could probably find a good group of characters that are not very good at certain things and uh, improve your chances. Like the ones that say the defense is valued will play very defensively. If you get a bunch of characters, three characters playing defensively and you play aggressively, uh, you might be able to beat them uh, there with less records. You've got more rule set. We looked at that. So, at the very least, unlike Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire, this is a game you could play. And you do, on the rare occasion, get to uh, get to look at these girls, but they barely ever show up in the game. The music is not obtrusive, but it's also probably non not that existent either. You'll probably get bored of it or not even recognize that it's there. But still, that's way better than Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire, where it was very annoying, very repetitive, and went in loops forever and ever. It sounded even worse than this song right now that's just about five notes going in, in a circle. So, it, what's really weird though is the fact that this game doesn't have Steam achievements and Mahjong Solitaire does. Which tells me they made Mahjong Solitaire after this game. Which is kind of ridiculous. Because from what I'm seeing, at the very least this is a slightly better game. Unfortunately, I don't really see a reason to cover the, this in depth. Uh, I've given you the just general basis of how to play Mahjong. Uh, you would have to... I'd recommend looking it up. I'd recommend playing it yourself. If we go back here and uh, take what I've tried to explain and look at the few pages that they are they are spending just a few sentences trying to explain in a uh, broken English. They're not really explaining the, how to play Mahjong. They're explaining how to play this game uh, using this interface. Uh, so you still kind of need to know how to play the game and the western world is not familiar with Mahjong at all so uh, really I was the only one here that helped give any tutorial to that and there's still a lot I don't know and still a lot the, to learn but at the very basics if you go look up how to play Jin Rummy properly and understand that pretty well and go look up the rules to Mahjong and understand how the scoring varies a little bit differently and this game helps you with seeing the different tile sets for Mahjong and knowing which uh, number is which number because it gives you the English version which is very helpful and was not existent on the cell phone version that I was playing so I was constantly having to relearn Japanese numbering uh, and always forgetting what number 8 and number 9 looked like in Kanagate. Uh, it is also a little weird that the numbers are in Japanese when this is a Chinese game. But that's how I've always seen it. So I have no idea why that's the case. It, it might very well be that the numbers are the same in both languages and it's a shared characters. But that's going to be it for the series, which I guess is really just a spotlight. Uh, we are going to look at Mahjong Pretty Girls Battle School Girl Edition, or whatever it's called, uh, tomorrow, or Monday, if today happens to be Friday. And so we'll look at that and play one more game. But that's kind of all that you need to know. Learn how to play Mahjong, play Mahjong. 
get enough victories, unlock the girls, and then you can play against different computer component opponents that may be easier or harder to beat. It's actually not a very good system, is it? It's not really rewarding you <laughs> for winning, it's just unlocking different opponents that probably should be unlocked by default. Anyway, that's it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want to support me further, go to my main YouTube page. On the right is a button that says support this channel. Click it, make a donation. And if you want to friend or follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.